we analyzed rational functions, a rational function, by finding the domain, and to do that, you set the denominator equal to zero and solve for x, and then whatever answers you get are the numbers that you take out of the domain, and your domain is everything else, which is what this says. The equations of the vertical asymptotes are x equals the numbers that have to be taken out of the domain. Usually, with some exceptions that I tried to not run into. So we could make a rule, a college algebra rule, and for people who go up to calculus, they'll find out. It's not a hard rule, it's just a little other rule. So then we found the horizontal asymptote, which is the tendency of the graph, a line that, that the graph gets closer and closer to, way out on the left and the right sides. And there are two rules governing that, and we met them last time. Um, last time we, <clears throat> we met one of the, uh, well, we'll call it the first rule, but they're not numbered. The degree of the top is zero, the degree of the denominator is two, and so when the degree of the numerator is lower than the degree of the denominator, your horizontal asymptote is y equals zero, which is the x-axis. And we drew those here. Well, these are the vertical asymptotes. This is the horizontal asymptote, which happens to be the x-axis in this particular problem. Because the degree of the numerator is lower than the degree of the denominator. And if you want to learn the technicalities about, well, why, you, you find out in calculus. I think in Calculus 1. So uh, I think everybody should take Calculus. It is a very interesting class. But that's then, this is now. We then went on to find the x-intercept and how you find the x-intercept of a rational function is you set the numerator equal to zero and solve for the variable, except there's no variable. And when there's no variable, that means there's boop, no x-intercept. Then we, uh, we found the y-intercept and found out that the way you find the y-intercept is you set all of the x's equal to zero. And that left us with one on top and negative 35 on the bottom, which is negative one over 35. And then when you write the y-intercept as a point, since x is zero and y is negative one over 35, that gives us this point, which is the y-intercept. And it so happens that negative one over 35, let's put it in the calculator, just for curiosity's sake. Negative one divided by 35. All right, it's about 0 0.03. I mean, it's almost zero, but just a little bitty, bitty, bitty bit below. Not really measurably below, but below. The, the y-intercept is not y equals zero. Okay. It's like um, trying to find a good color for the graph. How about green? Our y-intercept is going to be really, really, really close. Again. Oh. We'll make it bright red really, really close 
but not exactly zero and underneath the zero because it's negative. OK, now we can draw the graph relatively accurately, especially once you look down here. But even if you didn't, it's easier though if you look at this. But trying to get that picture is very difficult. You have to play with the window. And I'll show you the crazy thing I had to set it to. Actually, we don't have time. Maybe I'll stick it on the end of the video. No, I need to do it now. Let's do it now because this was extremely difficult and I had to play with it and play with it and play with it and you'll see how I played with it. I put this in Y1, okay? One divided by parentheses, X squared plus two X minus 35, and then I graph. That's what you get. Now, do you have any information from that? I sure don't. So I had to ask myself, self, what the heck are we gonna do? And I think I ended up trying something like this. Going to the Y's. And, and uh, my idea was, well, what if I can like zoom in on like from positive two to negative two, except it would be the other way around, negative two to positive two. So we're here really, really close to the X axis. What would we get? So I go to the window to do that. And the Y's are how high and how low. So I went here to Y min, which is as low as you can see, and I made it negative two. And then I went to Y max, which is as high as you can see. And then I held my breath. <gasps> All right, that's better. Not perfect, okay? Definitely not perfect because see, it cuts out there and it's really going to go up and then out here forever. And this is going to continue down forever. But the problem is these are getting so close to their asymptotes that the calculator cannot tell the difference. So I tried this. I tried increasing the resolution, X res, to two. No, no, there's no information from that. So I went back to one. Now it never occurred to me to do something like say, what, uh-uh, no, no, no. One point two. I wonder if I could do that. No, still no good. We're going back to one. Resolution one. And see if I've screwed it up completely. No, there we are. Okay, so this is where I got that. And that is absolutely the best I can do, unless maybe See what you have to do? You have to play with these things. And I wish it weren't true. I wish it would be perfect all the time. That's a lot better. Okay, what I did was I changed, I changed my Y table to, to negative one to positive one. So really, what we're doing is, if I can temporarily draw a line, and I'm gonna take it out. Now, 
this graph will actually that graph is really the portion of this graph between the green lines. That's all we're looking at because that's the only decent graph we can get. And for the money you pay for it, frankly, should be better. All right, now, I want to erase those because those green lines aren't anything. And I want to get to more exciting stuff. But first, we're going to try to graph it. So let us say that you put that in your calculator and you played with the window until you got something reasonably good. Okay. So. There. Now I, with my great artistic talent or autistic talent, I am going to make something that looks at least as close to being like that graph on the computer as I can get. This graph is supposed to be getting closer and closer to the asymptote, but never touching it for all the reasons I dealt with yesterday. And then remembering that this is the y-intercept below y equals zero, but just a little bitty bit below y equals zero. And then it curves down and gets closer and closer and closer to the asymptote. And it curves down and gets closer and closer to the asymptote, but never touches. And then over here, we kind of have a mirror image of this. like that. And see out here on the left and the right, the graph gets closer and closer to the horizontal asymptote. But in here, it would have been allowed to cross the horizontal asymptote, but never the vertical asymptote. Never, 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 never. And thus, we have analyzed this rational function. And we've done a pretty darn good job. This is higher level math. This is no baby stuff. This is what all the math you've learned up till now has been getting you ready to do, to analyze functions because we use functions to describe everything or almost everything in our lives. It would be difficult to find anything that's not described with a function. Okay, let's look at the next one. And now we've got to speed it up a little bit. Here we have 3x minus 5, over 3x plus 21, and we talked about this a little bit yesterday. But first, we have to determine the domain. So I take the denominator and I set it equal to zero. Why? Because that's what I want to not have happen. So of course I'm going to do it. But that's to find out what the x is when my denominator equals zero, and then I take the X out of the domain so that it never happens again.
you can tell I spent a lot of years as a parent. And this had better never happen again. Right. OK, I'm going to divide by three and I'm going to divide by three. And what that will give me is X equals. I'm writing way too big. Excuse me a minute. That's why. <coughs> That's why I'm writing way too big because I made that so fat. All right, now we're going to have X equals negative seven. Which means X cannot equal negative seven or bad things will happen. So I go to the X axis where the domain lives. And I decide, well, that looks like it could be a negative seven. Why not? I take the poor little guy off the x-axis. And then we get to use everything else. Which is not a bad bargain when you think about it. And so our interval notation for the domain is going to be from negative infinity on the left to the left side of negative seven on the right of this interval. And from the other side of negative seven, I should, there. OK, and from the other side of negative seven, but not negative seven. All the way to positive infinity. So you see when we write interval notation, it's always based on the X axis, the number line. Where are the numbers in relation to each other? Whatever's on the left on the number line goes on the left in the interval. <clears throat> and whatever's on the right on the number line goes in on the right in the interval. And that's how you do interval notation. OK. So. Find the equation of the vertical asymptote. No prob. Negative seven, but not just negative seven because we're looking for the equation of the vertical asymptote. So that's going to be X equals negative seven. And that's just the equation of the vertical asymptote. So we have one vertical asymptote here. Might as well go ahead and draw it. Negative seven. I hope you're negative seven. Yes. OK. Just one. Notice we just have one. Now we're going to use the other rule I talked about to find the horizontal asymptote. When the degree of the top is the same as equal to the degree of the bottom. Then here's what you do. You take the ratio of the leading coefficient of the leading coefficients. Why me? Why me? I'm a basically nice person, you know? I have faults. Yeah, but I, I'm basically okay. My life should be perfect. I don't think it works that way, but oh well. 
Um, three over three is what I'll have. If there were a five here and a seven there, or a five there and a two there, that would make up my uh, ratio. It's the, the top over the bottom. Leading coefficient only, the number only. And that's when the degree of the top equals the degree of the bottom. Doesn't have to be degree one, could be degree two, degree three, degree four, doesn't matter as long as the degrees are equal. So what does that mean? That means since the horizontal asymptote is a, is a horizontal line, its equation is going to be y equals a number. And here, the number is 1. So y equals 1. I, hmm. Yeah, let's make it blue. Y equals 1. Well, 1 is here. Y equals 1 is here. So that means we're going to have our horizontal asymptote being the horizontal line Y equals 1. Now we have a frame. See, that's why these are so good. We have a kind of a frame within which to find the x-intercept, the y-intercept, and, and then graph this equation, which incidentally looks like that. Okay, so we're going to find the x-intercept and the y-intercept before we graph. The x-intercept, I have to take the numerator the num equals zero. So 3x minus 5 equals zero. Yeah, I'm used to this being bigger. Let me know if you're ever not able to see, okay? I'm closer to my own screen than you are. So, I mean, all of this, I already know it. It's important for you to be able to see it. So just let me know when you cannot. All right, I add five. And I add five. So 3x equals 5, divide by 3, divide by 3, x equals 5 thirds. So our x-intercept is not 5 thirds. Our x is 5 thirds. Positive. There. Five thirds is about two and two thirds. Yeah, two and two thirds. So I'm going to find two and two thirds. Here's x equals one, x equals two, x equals three. So two and two thirds, I don't know, I'm going to estimate it about there. That's my x-intercept. Now we find the y-intercept. There, okay. You always, always, even if you're not dealing with a function, you always do this. I mean, you might not write f if it's not a function, 
but you let all of your x's equal zero. This is the code for letting all the x's equal zero. So you look back up here, and you see that this is 3x minus 5 over 3x plus 21. But f of 0 has the x's being 0. So I am, I could just say times 0 times 0. Well, 3 times 0 is 0. 3 times 0 is 0. 0 minus 5 is negative 5. 0 plus 21 is positive 21. So again, we have one of these really small numbers. This is going to be a little smaller than one fourth. OK, a little smaller than one fourth. So. Oh, oh. Moving too fast. Come over here. I let <clears throat> I let all my X's equal zero. And this is the Y. So that's negative 5 21sts. Which look at it this way. Negative 5 over 20 would be negative 1 fourth. This is 21. It's going to be really close to negative 1 fourth. Not exactly, but really close. Sometimes you can just estimate like that. So let's find negative one fourth, and I think that's good enough for my estimate. How about here? Now, we can graph. Now look, this is up in the air, and the reason it is, is that it still has a lot farther to go before it starts getting close to the asymptote. And this has a lot farther to go before it starts getting close to the asymptote. But these guys are right in there, right in there. I, I've noticed that if I make the line fat, it's not as wiggly. I don't know that that's true. But let's give it a try. Well, dog, I'll just make it black, see if I care. Okay, here we go. You see, this is really hard. It really is. For me, I find it really hard. I have to make a line that goes through these two points and then comes up there. The reason it, the reason it looks like it's on the asymptote is that it's so close. And down here, roughly. And then here, up here, you can actually get some exact numbers there if you want to, I don't care. Up there. We have analyzed our function.
discussion. All right, let's move on. I think this is the last one. Oh, and then we have the word problems. Okay. Here we have a rational function. Determine the domain. You're going to learn a new way of solving a quadratic function. It might not be new to some of you, but it's going to be new to most of you because you learn this in intermediate algebra. Notice that the X term is not there. It's just the quadratic term and the constant term. Well, it's also the denominator, so I am going to take the denominator. No, I'm not. I'm really. I'm going to make that a little smaller because it's so big. There. 5x squared minus 4 equals 0. You do this when you have this situation. And this is an intro to stuff we're going to do either next week or the week after. Five X squared equals four. Now the only thing squared there is the X. Five is just the number in front of it. It's the leading coefficient. So I'm going to divide by five and divide by five. So X squared equals four over five. I'm going to take the square root of both sides. Okay, but here's a new step. plus or minus. This is a symbol. Well, I'll show you in a bit. I'll show you in a bit. So we're going to have X equals. Now, in a while, week after next, you're going to learn a new method of how to deal with this. But until that happens, we're just going to get, well, a calculator approximation. Four fifths is 0.8. What'd you get on your calculator? The square root of 0.8. Let's find out what the square root of 0.8 is. There. It's 0.9. Well, we could say 0.89, all right? Because the four after it wouldn't round it up. So let's just say, 0.89, or we could say 0.9. That's even easier. So plus or minus 0.9. What that means is x equals, yeah, which means it cannot be allowed to equal negative 
and x equals positive 0.9. So all this plus minus means is that this is really two answers. One is positive, one is negative. But it looks scary when you first see it to some people, to me. It looks scary to me the first time I ever saw it. So these are the numbers that X cannot be allowed to equal. Or we can remind ourselves, hey, we're talking about the square root of 0.8 here. That's the exact answer. Now. We're going to have negative infinity to negative 0.9. You end up with positive 0.9 to infinity. So this is almost negative 1 and 1, isn't it? But not quite. And our vertical asymptotes, the equations of the vertical asymptotes are going to be this and this, but without the slash. So you find that when you find the domain. X equals negative 0.9 and X equals positive 0.9. Those are going to be your vertical asymptotes and they're going to be a pain to try to draw because they're so close to 1. Oh, no they're not. Never mind, I didn't say that. That was stupid. For a teacher to say that is stupid. Pretend I didn't. Let's just edit it out. Okay. You're not we all make, we all mistakes. make mistakes. Thank you. Bless you, child. All right, horizontal asymptote. You tell me, somebody blurted out. What kind of situation do we have here for the horizontal asymptote? Look back at your rules. Okay, the degrees of the numerator and the degree of the denominator are the same. The degree of the numerator is two. And the degree of the denominator is two. Therefore, the, the ha, is going to be the line y equals three fifths. All right, so we'll bring that down here. And that's when the degrees are the same, you take the leading coefficient on top and put it in a fraction over the leading coefficient on the bottom. So that's where the three-fifths comes from. So the horizontal asymptote is the line Y equals three-fifths. See, this can start going pretty fast. The x-intercept, you take the numerator and set it equal to zero. OMG. <sighs> Three x squared, these fractions. I'm gonna get a headache. Three x squared plus five. 
equals zero. All right, x-intercept, minus five, minus five. Oh. We're going to have x squared equals negative 5 thirds. And then take the square root of both sides. And what do you have? You have the square root of a negative number. The error you get on your calculator is going to say not a real number. That is, that number is not in the real number system. So what that means is we do not have an x-intercept. Yep, look at that. We don't have an x-intercept. Doggone. All right. Find the y-intercept, doggone it. Okay, that's going to be f, e f of zero equals three times zero squared plus five over three times zero squared minus four. I think, I think, I think. Yes. Well, that's three times zero plus five over three times zero minus four. That's a zero, that's a zero. Zero plus five is five. Zero minus four is negative four. Do not leave a negative on the bottom of a fraction. Instead, pull it out to the front. or stick it up top. Either way is okay, but not on the bottom. So that means our y-intercept is x equals zero, y equals negative five-fourths, which is negative one and a quarter. This one, this is the only easy one to graph. Okay, so let's do that. Negative, all right, we're going to start from the beginning now. We're going to look at what our vertical asymptotes are. Negative 0.9, almost negative 1, and negative 0.9, I mean, a positive 0.9, which is almost 1. Not all that difficult. But still. Okay. So somehow here. Yeah, see? No. Get really close to negative one, but not negative one. And really close to one, but not one. That wasn't as bad as I thought. Okay. Now, the horizontal asymptote is three-fifths. I can manage that. Three-fifths is, well, um, imagine this, imagine the area from zero to one here on the y-axis being cut into five parts. 
one, two, three, four, five. I would, I would guess that this, oh, that would be four fifths. Three fifths is closer to the center. Not that you have to be exact. Okay. So, It's okay. Now, we don't have an X intercept, but we do have a Y intercept. Negative one and one quarter. Here's negative one. Negative one and a quarter would be about here. So let me make a little mark there. <sighs> okay, now. Of course, I could always do what the calculator does and make it fade out. Not really touching. Not really touching. <laughs> Okay, Ugh. all right, now, ah, and then that and that. So this is pretty easy. Ugh. All right, one more time. Not touching. Passable. If you don't mind the universe being destroyed twice. And we won't even talk about what's going on down there. Incidentally, this was a good easy graph. I didn't have to do anything weird to the uh, X and Y axis. Incidentally, to graph this on your graphing calculator, you would have to put parentheses around the top. So if you were at Y1, you would say print 3X squared plus 5, parentheses closed, divided by Perin 5x squared minus 4. You have to group the top and the bottom together. That is the top together, everything in the top together, everything in the bottom together. Unless you've only got one term. And as you can see, you've got two terms here, two terms here. All right, discussion about all this. You can see graphing by hand is hard. Let's get to the word problems. They look terrifying. 
and maybe they are. First, there's this. That looks scary, doesn't it? Well, this function right here, where t is equal to or greater than 15, gives the body concentration, this is the body concentration, in parts per million of a certain dosage of medication after t, which is measured in hours. In other words, t starts at 15 hours after you receive the medication and goes from there. What does n of t approach as t goes to infinity? Now this is math talk, but you've got to know what it means. Here's what it means. It means here, a. What is the, the body dosage or body concentration, the concentration of the drug in the body After lots of hours, after tons of hours, after a lot of, of time has gone by. Since if you were graphing this, you would have the body concentration. That is, you would have the concentration of the drug in the body at any time equal to or greater than 15 hours. So 15 hours, 16 hours, 17 hours, 18 hours, so on and so forth. Um, what you want to know, since you're the medical professional, is how much of this drug is going to stay in the people's body maybe after a couple of days, after 24 hours, 48 hours? Because you care. That's what the horizontal asymptote is. Whatever letter you've got acting like an X, what happens when that gets really, really big? Here we're dealing with the concentration of a drug in the, in the blood system, in the body. So now we're asking this, what is the body concentration after a lot of time has gone by? We have to find the, uh, the ha, the horizontal asymptote. That will tell us. So we analyze this. There's a T there and a T there. It's T to the one and T to the one. The degrees of the numerator and the denominator are the same. Therefore, the ha is going to be Y equals 0.7 over four. The ratio of the leading coefficients in the numerator and in the denominator. Well, and here they want an answer as a decimal. So we're going to do that. 0.7 divided by four. 
Let's, well, of course that's going to be it. Actually, it'd be 7 over 40 if we were to math frack it. So this is better. Points, uh, let's see, in parts per million. So this would be 0.175 parts per million. Explain the meaning of the answer to part A in terms of the application. That means the context of the problem. Well, what that's telling you is a medical professional, maybe you're a medical researcher. Maybe you're researching different vaccines for COVID. What you've just found out is that this drug is never going to disappear completely. Now, never in real life, I mean. But this is what it's going to go to. It's not going to go to zero. It's going to go to 0.175 parts per million, which admittedly is not even one part per million. So you want to ask yourself, is that acceptable? That a person's got to go sloshing around with this drug in their blood, at least little, little maybe atoms of it forever. I don't know. But that's what it means. That's what the horizontal asymptote tells you. It tells you that the amount of this medication in your blood will never go to zero. Now that could well be a good thing depending on what this drug is. Amount of medication will never decrease to zero. Will never. That kind of gives you pause. Now here, we have a kind of a more involved, you get to play around. It's good practice with your calculator. Uh, the population, P in thousands, so this is in thousands, that ends up being very important in thousands of a resort community is given by this, where T starts at zero. That makes sense. T equal to or greater than zero. Okay, that is the population. Now this would be something you would study if you were in the hospitality career sequence because you might be the person who has to know that. The general manager of a resort. Woo, that's a, there's a worse life than that. Now, the first thing you're asked to do is just find the population at T equals zero, where that's months. Zero months means the, right away, and then after one month, after three months, after eight months. So we're going to do that on the calculator. And then find the horizontal asymptote of the graph and determine the value of that. When T goes to infinity, in other words, when the number of months goes to a really long time. You're going to see that the answer is very common sense. And then you're asked to explain it. And you're actually given four choices. But let's go ahead and play with the calculator. Actually, you can do these by hand until you get to the decimal. Um, but then, even then, it's not really hard because zero times 500 is zero. 
7 times 0 squared will 0 times 0. That's not something we like to think about, but just think of it as being 0. So 7 times that would be 0. And then plus 9, you'd have 0 over 9, which is 0. So the population in the first month before, mo before month 1 <clears throat> would be 0. Now, after one month, you're going to have 500 times 1, which is 500, over 7 times 1 squared. Well, 1 squared is 1 times 1, which is 1. So 7 times 1 is 7, plus 9 is 16. Then you can get your trusty calculator and get a number for that. Um, and we're going to. But just for those of you who just don't like using the calculator, there are some times when you can actually do this part of it by hand. Three squared is nine, so seven times nine is 63 plus nine, that'll be 72. Um, and then 500 over 8, that's 4,000. Yeah, it is. Over, now I need a calculator, 7 times 64. Now what we're actually going to do is we're going to put all these numbers in the calculator. But if you do these in steps, like, okay, this is going to be 7 times 64 plus 9. That becomes easier to put in a calculator that doesn't have to be a scientific calculator. In case you were worried about that. Okay, meanwhile, the rest of us who are kind of sort of addicted to graphing calculators or scientific calculators, because what we're using here is uh, the scientific calculator part of this. So that was a dumb thing to do. This is seven times zero squared plus nine. We can do that by hand. I'm not really sure what the calculator would do. Well, let's see. Let's see. 500 times zero divided by parentheses seven times zero squared plus nine parentheses closed. Let's see if it goes crazy. No, it didn't. I'm surprised. All right, now, we are going to do this. You can keep typing each time, or you can do a safety measure because it's real easy to just make your finger, or not make, but your finger just hits the wrong number. You can do this. Look at this. Second, enter. We'll make all of this appear again. Then look what I'm going to do. The cursor is blinking over the zero. I'm going to change it to one. Then I backtrack to there and I make it into a one. And then I hit enter. And I get 31.25. That's 31 and one quarter people. Oh, no, it's not. Because 31 and one quarter thousand. This is in thousands, right? It's a big resort in thousands. So what you do is you multiply this by a thousand. And what that does is move the decimal point three places to the right. 
So your answer is going to be 31,250. Yeah. Forgot about that little problem. OK, that's a lot of people after the first month, but it must be the season, right? All right, now we could just say 1500 over 72 or. I could say second enter and now I'm going to backtrack to the ones and put in a three because that's what they're asking next. Ah, that's going to have to be rounded, isn't it? So, 20.83 three times a thousand is 20,833 people in your little domain there. All right, and see, we're just practicing with this. Uh, 500 times, now we're gonna change it to eight. So second, enter and I backtrack to eight because, because because the those are the only changes you have. Everything else stays the same. Why not take a shortcut? Goodness gravy, look at this. After eight months, All right, we're going to round this to three decimal places. So this seven is going to round that two up to a three. This is what I got if you can't see this. Seven, five, two, seven, three, five, two, three. And we want to get this in thousands, right? So um, let's multiply this by a thousand. So times. 1,000, that'll be 8, 7, 5, 2, 0.73523, 3, and that fraction of a person tends to be pretty unhappy. They want to know why they're not a whole person, so um, I think we should just round up to the nearest whole person there. Let them be a whole person. So we'll go for 8,753 people. Look at that. Look at that, manager. You went from 20,833 people to 8,753 people. What the heck is going on? So you remember being in Miss Rademacher's class and finding the horizontal asymptote. Well, let's see what this trend is going to be. Here, the degree of the numerator is one. The degree of the denominator is two. So y equals zero is the ha. Y equals zero is the X axis. What does that tell you? What is Y on the X axis? It's zero. It means that when your season is all done, at the end of the season, Nobody is there. That's what it means. That's why people really need the horizontal asymptotes. 
they need the rest of it too, but they need the horizontal asymptotes to find out what is the tendency of this pattern after a long time. Well, of course, what if you have a, a resort in Yellowstone Park? It's really cold there in the winter time. And in fact, the whole area closes down in like October. So ain't nobody gonna be there, except the bears. Maybe a few full-time uh, um, um, park rangers. That's about it. And then in the spring, there you go again. They start flooding in to see the super volcano caldera. That's it. So let's talk about everything we did yesterday and today. In particular, analyzing rational functions. In engineering, you would probably call this horizontal asymptote the steady state. What is the steady state? You've got a lot of heat in the summer. You've got a lot of cold in the winter. I mean, if you live farther north. Um, but what is the steady state? What is the most common temperature range and, and the, um, the swelling or contracting of whatever metals you're dealing with? So there are uses in medicine, there are uses in business, there are uses in engineering. Um, really important stuff in real life. Well, today my help time start at noon because I had to go um, to the, I want to say DMV, but it's not the DMV, it's the, the State Revenue Office here in Bentonville. Well, here in Rogers, Benton County. Um, so now I'm going to do my uh, office hours in the afternoon, after, after class. Is the Is exam on Thursday the same the how it was last time, like where it's like pay and everything? Um, about the exam and is it yeah. like the last time? Yes, exactly yeah. like the last time. Okay. And I think I've already got the place where you upload your scratch work. In week eight. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Nobody else has any questions. I'll go ahead and wrap this up. Take my own little break. And I'll see you at the link for help time if you need some help. I am glad to help you. Honest, I'm glad. Honest, I'm looking forward. To the point that starting tomorrow, but we could always start today, anybody who wants to come to my help times will get, for the first time they're there, five extra points, extra credit. Just by coming by and saying hello and letting me write your name down. Because I want you to know I'm there for you. You don't have to be afraid of me. <laughs> Most of the time. Okay, bye bye for now.